Maybe I'm crazy, but lightsabering is not a sport. Okay, I kept that. This is a new world. New day. It's no. a new day. No, it's not. It's a, a new day. No, it's nerds run the world now. That's true. <laughs> Maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not. Welcome to the Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor, that's Brandon Newman. Hola. Who's apparently making points today. Yay! Uh, Dante Jones will join us today, NBA yes. vet and, mm-hmm. uh, and friend and yes. uh, Fox Sports family member. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, the NFL and Kaepernick have come to some sort of agreement. Some sort. We'll get into that. Antonio Brown is, is single-handedly running uh, the NFL off-season content for the here. NFL. Yes, thank you. Um, with some interesting hair choices and um, well, not the hair choices, actually the colors, really. Although I figured it out, like the blue and and stuff. Is, he's training at UCLA, so I feel like subconsciously the, the colors are influencing the the, the coloring. I don't want to tell people what they can and can't do with their hair no, and, not. And, and, and colors and stuff, but it's jarring. And for him to act as if it's not. Well, that's the point is to act if it's, if right. it's not jarring. Like this serious meeting with like our Like one Rooney. day I'm going to come in here, my head is going to be completely <laughs> shaved, and I'm going to act as if it's not. Yeah, that, and then okay. when anyone asks me what happened, I'm, yeah. going to, I'm going to treat them as if they're morons for asking yeah, like, me. What do you, what do you Because that's the best part of doing something like that. <laughs> that's why you do it. That is fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, Odell and the Patriots possibly mm. teaming up, which would ruin um, all of our lives, but also be very interesting. Oh, my gosh. Um, Petty Court is Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the lightsaber thing. And baseball contracts are still doing that thing that they do, where mm-hmm. they where they do the, the, the lots of money for lots of years. And then 10 years from now, we'll be talking about what a mistake that was. But we'll get to that later. Oh, and Cardi and Bruno's new song, which I love. Yes. Uh... It's good that you I love mean, it. Make mistakes if you, if you want to. Okay. And we'll talk about the Oscars. But let's get started with Dante Jones. All right. Welcome back, Dante Jones. Hey. Peace, peace, peace. Uh, nice suit. Thank you. I, I think I'm a little bit overdressed today, but it's cool. Yeah. It is what well, it is. Well, we were just talking about uh, off the air. Um, you could have worn one of your large white tees that you just found. Oh, my throwback have. jersey? I could, yeah. Nah. So do you have like a... You have a Oh, you have a bunch of them at the I have house. A storage bin full of throwback jerseys. <laughs> of like, throwback jerseys? Because I, I thought it was gonna come back, and they oh. were and they were worth something to me then. So like, it's like you know what we got put these oh, away. Wait, 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 yeah. jerseys? I thought you were talking about like tall big, tees. tall white tees. Those two probably. You no. got those two, right? No, no, no. no. Well, oh. no, 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 because tall white tees. I, I, well, at that point in time, I was uh, what my first four years in the league. So like, when I wore a tall white tee, I was throwing it away right after. Like. And I and I and I and I have found no, a con- no no I have found a connect so I had them at like five dollars a piece. Yeah, I mean that's, that's so, called that's, finish line. You that's, connect that's, with no, finish no, line. No 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 I had like the good ones. <laughs> oh okay okay okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good ones. Yeah no I, I feel you. I, okay yeah. but so, so you shouldn't get rid of your throwback jerseys though. No 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 I I, I need to but I, you know what I did I took some of them and I got them like really I got them signed so they're like it's like a fifty four or sixty so I got a sixty George Gervin. <laughs> and I got it signed. That's so ginormous. Um, anyway, uh, let's talk about the people who aren't wearing throwback jerseys mm-hmm. yet. Um, uh-huh. So, you're friends with LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, seriously. There's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot that's happened with LeBron over the last couple weeks. What? Mm-hmm. Every day it seems like something's going Every, on. Yes. It's, and it's, uh, and it's, it's almost by the hour. Okay. Uh, they decided to give us like two days of rest, which is much appreciated. Yes. Uh, for, that's true. Yeah. All-star break. All-star break, which yeah. we, we all needed, really. We all needed this all-star yes, break. Did. Not just LeBron and the Lakers. Yes, did. Um, so, what happens when they come back? Because they really need to make the playoffs. Yes, they do. And what happens is a sharpened focus. I think guys get a way to compress and to let all the bad stuff go away and, and to not have to worry about trade rumors or, or the possibility of things going on that can be out of their control. And guys get to really concentrate on basketball for the stretch and do something that some of those people have never done before and that's make the playoffs and understand what playoff basketball is about. And I think that is enough to motivate that young group of guys over there because you have some champions over there that's been down that path and can explain to you what it's like to be in the playoffs and to contend for a championship and what the finals is like but you have to really be in it to understand it and I think you have to give these guys an opportunity to to grow and to get to the playoffs and see and to make them more hungry for that experience because once you get your first time in the playoffs you're like oh yeah I got to be here again because that's when people really know your name like those guys are 
are names in, in our culture, but like once they make the playoffs, they'll really have a name. Really, people will really be pulling them over on the street because right. that's the time of basketball where the, everybody's watching the same same right. games at one time. But with everything that's gone on with the trade rumors and them kind of just being lumped in as disposable pieces, <laughs> it's not and disposable then, pieces because that's the way people are making them look. But that core, that that young core was something of value, and I was I always took it as something because it could you could have taken that young core and threw that to New Orleans, and that would have been a team that had time to grow. It's just that the Lakers didn't have the time to grow. Like they right, expect them to go I to the mean, finals now. You're going when you sign LeBron James, you guys, to the want, New Orleans. The, the Lakers fans want a championship tomorrow. And right. You can't and you even get it tomorrow. Those young people, because you have time. And don't you bring in LeBron? Uh, no, no. Sometimes LeBron ain't the microwave. Sometimes un- organizations draft people and sign people as assets purely. Okay. To move later, you right. gotta think of it. it's it's, so, yeah, it's like stuff that we like that sneakerheads made... buy a bunch of shoes, right. and they're like, you know what? I'm gonna buy all this because it's of value, and somebody wants right. it, and I'm gonna ship it over there and like make some the money. I'm gonna buy. Now, I'm gonna get them, the though. threes because yeah. they limited, and somebody yeah. out there, I know somebody really wants this 14, mm-hmm. okay. and I'm gonna make well, my money. Well, now that Kuzma and Lonzo and Ingram uh, have all been made to feel as if they're threes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> in the shoe game, in the shoe right? Game, how yes. do you then uh, reprogram your mental state to I am now, com- like, I'm still committed to this organization who has shown they're not fully committed to me? Mm-hmm. What? And and I, which I get what you're saying. Like, there's they're, they had value, which is why they were put in the trade, which is, but most people don't look at it that way right. when you're in it. Um, and also, everyone really feels like LeBron is orchestrating all this. Like he's he has a lot of say in what happens, whether you know anyone wants to admit it or not. And your friend, <clears throat> yeah, your friend. Yeah. LeBron. And then at the end of the season, <laughs> he not, he there's a lot of ch- yes, he does. And there's listen, a, there's listen, a listen. lot of changes. What that I are do happen. know is that he does not like to be involved as much as people think he does, because at that point in time, then you can blame him. And yes, he has an opinion. And when you have a, a generational talent, like if you're running a team, you consult with a better basketball mind than yours, right? right. Like, like if you have LeBron on your team, you're gonna say, you know, Brown, what do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could take that as he has control of the team and he's orchestrating the trade. Like if you said, LeBron, if Magic said, Brown, you know what? You like AD? Yeah, I like AD. I could have did this. He could be cool with this. And how Luke's running this? Right. Is that orchestrating or is that my opinion? If you ask somebody who's great their opinion, it's not orchestrating. Well, like, sure. I don't think he runs in with like, you know what? This is the trade that we got to do. Yeah. Get the get them out of here. I mean, he did no. run in like, you need no. to fire Eric Spolstra. So he, he... Me and Eric Spolstra are not getting along. And that's part of communicating to the people that you sign a contract with. Like, you'll sign a contract and be like, listen, if you need anything, I have an open door. Come talk to me about it. Okay, me and Eric are not getting along and it's st- not going this way. This is what that open door is for, right? Like that's what your manager or your boss says. Pat Riley, I, I, I would have promised when they signed LeBron, I could, I bet my whole household on it. That you know, if any problems, if things are not going how you think they should, you, my door is always yeah, open. Come talk say to me. That, yeah. but they don't really and some mean people, that. and you're absolutely correct. And some people right. really use the door. Right. Like I tried well, to use the door one time, they were like, you know what? Go back downstairs yeah. and figure that, it out. Figure Speech, but LeBron could Nothing. be like, he'll find something. Yeah, I, I didn't know you were so literal about everything. But LeBron yeah. probably goes in and uses his and 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 voices his opinion because you have to communicate to to win a championship is more than just the basketball court in the front office. They have to intertwine and work together because everybody has to feel at home. Eddie, everybody has to feel motivated. Some people have to be massaged. Some people have to be looked after. But it has to be one continuous flow of information. Going on at all points in time, like Do you, you feel can't, like that's you can't what's divide. Happening with the Lakers? I think it's at the beginning stages of it because I think he signed for something to be able to communicate to the front office, communicate to the coaching staff. He signed on for that type of relationship, which the greats have. I think Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson were speaking on a constant basis. I think so. I think Kobe and Phil were speaking on a constant basis about the state of our team and how we're going to try to do this because that's what great organizations in any field of business. They communicate and, and, and go together for a common cause. So we are supposed to believe that LeBron James, <laughs> on, on his fourth team now, Sit here and believe. Okay, is in Los Angeles on a four-year deal where he must win a championship. Right. Uh, he cannot miss the playoffs. These are not options for LeBron James. Well, like Literally, they could happen, but it's going to be a mark on his legacy, mm-hmm. whether whether we like it or not, because he's a polarizing player. Uh, well, absolutely. Okay? So these things, are, things must happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
is not being seriously consulted on every single move. Like if you're like, I feel I'm LeBron and I feel like Lonzo needs to be here. I'm not saying that's what he feels, but like he's not going to be like, yeah, Lonzo can't be in that trade. <laughs> he's going to have answers. Like you're going you're to ask him a question and he's going to answer the question. Is he going to be a- answering this question every day? No, you may have a broad conversation okay, about it. Here's a better question. Uh, more along what I'm getting to. Do you think that those guys who are in those trade talks, like in the in those trade packages, feel some type of way towards LeBron at all? Because you know mm-hmm. you, you're putting no, into because a trade they weren't. They weren't. You have it, some sort of anxiety about possibly moving, yes. and now you got to flip out of that. So maybe you feel some way towards the front office in some way or another. But do you feel that way? At, is there any animosity towards LeBron? You think? I don't think so because you look at who you're getting traded for. Another possibly generational talent. It's okay. not like you're getting traded for okay. somebody like you. You understand what I'm saying? Like AD, but do players think that way? Yeah, I think they I think I, I don't think they're as Cuz I don't think nobody as, 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 as much of a saying. space <laughs> cadet as you're claiming you know what I'm to be. Saying? Hey. No, I don't, I don't think they're, they're space cadets in like, you know what? Eight, I'm not be- AD ain't better than me. Uh, like, nah, you got to look at look at yourself in the mirror and be like, you know what? AD is cold. And AD and Brown would would be something that I would like. You got? Would you do it if you if, if you were um, Magic Johnson? And I think uh, someone no, could look in the mirror and be like, you know what? I would not have traded all those pieces for Anthony not Davis. all of those pieces, but some. I, like, I would have traded a lot. Could but you not more all than those. people think? Could you have gotten some of those on the free market? Quality for the product is actually going on the court. Yes. Okay, but here's, 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 here's okay, the situation the free that the market. Lakers are in though. That when you get LeBron James, it is a short term. Uh, solution to a championship. He's not. He's no longer building Magic and the Lakers are no longer building for a legacy situation. They're building for a win a championship right now situation. LeBron is not going to play forever. He's got a four year deal. You got to win a championship within the next four years. So your young core is no longer as important as it was before LeBron got here. Right. So and if you're adding AD, you're adding piece of a young core like he's not an old he is man 20, he is 25. So, okay so I like that. once you so you would have added ad and you'd have tried to get another young superstar and then you just fill it in with ro- guys who know what they do role players role players guys who are stars at their role and you can get that on the free market what about luke wallen what about Luke? Well, I, we've everyone's pretty much reporting that he's not going to get don't fired, which I don't Luke. feel like he should be fired uh, midseason. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like he should be fired midseason. I don't think Brandon does either. Absolutely, you're it, absolutely it not solves right. nothing. No. It's you're not going to bring in the person of the future unless you, the unless season. you have who you want to be your coach. If, like if you've made your mind up who you, because okay. they, they obviously didn't hire him. So if you have who you want to be your coach, then you don't waste time. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think that if they you're going to do. do a coaching search and you don't, if you haven't designated who you mm-hmm. want, then you wait to the offseason. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't feel like they have a replacement that's better than Luke Wallen. Maybe there are I some personality I, situations there. Are, there. there are some. There are some out there because of the fact that you get coaches for different scenarios, right? There are coaches for a youth youth build and mm-hmm. there are championship coaches. It's true. So you can't put a champ like you couldn't put Phil Jackson with the 76ers that were tanking. It wouldn't have worked. Right. Phil would have went nuts. And right, right, right. expectations of those guys, the triangle wouldn't have worked because those guys don't know who they are yet. Like, Joel Embiid would have just been in there. He's not playing. Um, ben Simmons was hurt. Like, it'd have, Phil would have lost it. Right. And he didn't do great in the situation in New York because he didn't have the talent. Now, he does well when he has talent, guys that I can use my system around. There are coaches out there that do well with talent. And people manage and know how to work with talent. They don't know how to work with youth or build youth. Right. So I think Luke would be better for the building process. So do you think that Luke is there next season? I don't think so, but not at his fault. And that's not a that's not a detriment to his talent as a coach. Like I think people think if Luke is fired, oh man, he didn't do his job. No, he was hired on the rebuild. Right. Well, I know I don't think it's I think that there's a lot of factors in this situation, particularly this year, that are not in Luke's control. Like, for example, LeBron hurting his groin that Mm -hmm. can't control that can't control Lonzo getting hurt and Rondo and Kuzma having issues. uh, Ingram struggling at the beginning of the season. All those things are out of his control. So I don't I don't look at and there's a lot of these situations where coaches get fired. I don't just look at the situation like, yeah, he sucked his fault. There's a lot of things that go into the situation. But. What about Luke's actual coaching? Because we always right. talk about the factors around him mm-hmm. that don't make it his fault. Like, do you think he is making the right adjustments? And do you think his lineup is actually working? And do you think he's managed Lonzo well? Do you think that him and LeBron are actually on the same page? Like, do you think the actual coaching stuff is going well? 
I think it's going as well as it could because. Why do I feel like you just gave me a, a political yeah, answer? I had to digest yeah. everything that you just said. Like okay. I wasn't going to just just shoot off and just say anything. It would be hard for you to be coached by somebody your age. Let's let's give let's give somebody else in his draft. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne saying, you know what, Brian, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna be your coach. He has a better way, relationship with Dwayne Wade than he does with Luke, right? Yeah, I, I so just, I have a friendship with Dwayne Wade. So now he can maybe tell me something, but it still would be hard because it's like, you know what? Like, do you really know what you're doing, bro? Like, honestly, like, do you, are we really going? That is is gonna that Luke Walton's fault, or is that the person it's, who's being coached fault? It's not. It's not. Look, but but there's no fault here. Okay, it's just that you have to hire the right person for the job. You can't assess fault. The Lakers you got, hire Phil Jackson. You have to hire. Like, <laughs> no. that, that, that yeah, would be that would be thing. perfect. But no, you have, but you have to get LeBron, LeBron no, no. and Phil Jackson have beef. Remember, you got to find somebody that you're back posse. in the posse days. That's back in the posse days. You got to find somebody time. that your that your best player respects mm-hmm. and listens to. I know for a fact that I got a I got a coach out there with four finals appearances and a championship, and I know they have a relationship. I know that I know that he respects them. I know. Why is no one googling right now? He just gave us a clue. Teron Lue. Oh. Yeah, no, I've been saying Ty Lue, though, oh, and, and, and there's not Ta- like Teron Lue has Ty Lue, four. Ty Lue name makes another super coach. Sense to me. Name a coach with four finals appearances and a ring out there on the market. I'll give you time. I'll give you a couple of days, <laughs> except Phil Jackson. <laughs> like, right. Right. Well, Phil Jackson. Okay, so not an then, option, so then, like, let's say LeBron, LeBron has a relationship and he does listen to him and he's he's been coached by him. The rest of the guys, like you, they gotta listen to him because I've been where you, I've been here with you as a player. Right. I know he knows how to communicate to players. He knows how to listen to the player in some respect and and kind of coach around the Would players. Would do that? Because he looked stressed towards the end of that. And also I think he's had some time to 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 comp- to decompress, decompress and I understand. Say, I've been saying like, Ty Lue, and everyone keeps looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, Ty Lue makes the most sense. But I think Ty stands out because he has finals experience. It's one thing for applied knowledge rather than yeah. when we get there, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what to expect. Yeah, and the way he won that finals. Right. Can't, some and, coaching and had to happen. You, and I'm I'm the hardest on my friends, and I think we always are. Like, I was coached by Ty, and he impressed me on his preparation as a professional, right. being the ability to coach, but also the ability to communicate to the guys and reach them. Like people think that LeBron was running Ty. I tell the story all all the time of like we're we're in Game Seven and it's halftime and LeBron has played the whole twenty four minutes. And Ty comes in there super upset and like he ain't doing enough. Who are we talking about? Like we talking about Jr. We talking about mm. uh, Amon? Like uh, he ain't he ain't giving me what what what? I, and he's he's ticked off. And I'm like dog, I'm I'm about to lose it on him. No, you not. You just don't want to tick him off. I would have said don't please don't lose it on. Like kind of ma- massage it a little bit. Say it the right way. Nah, he need to hear it. He his first his first his first set of speech was to LeBron you need to do more mm. you need to do more I am I'm doing everything I need more how's the rest of the team reacting to that they're looking like like you looking now like so that puts everybody else on blast right. and then what LeBron does he takes it alright and that's the halftime speech you need to do more I need more from you you didn't do this on, on this defensive play you gave up here if we don't win this, I need it from you. They, they go take for, that, and then he goes and gives more. Okay, so they get because they he could communicate to the top. They need it from him because he's the best player, though, right? So from a, a player standpoint, because being a football guy, I've seen the negative effects on a team when your best player isn't your leader. And but, right but, now, but he is the leader. Of but the right team. now, they're talking about the Lakers. They said Rajon Rondo run the Lakers right now. They said Rajon Rondo is the one leading this young core and teaching them. You saw how everybody reacted so, when he made that big so shot in, in Boston. Did, who was hired? Who was hired to help the big three out? And Rajon Rondo when they went on their on, uh, after they won their championship and they went on their run. Like Doc Rivers hired Ty Lue mm. to manage Ray Paul. Rajon Rondo and KG. All roads lead the tie. Okay, so we've settled it. Uh, it's Ty Lue from hey, the next the Los Angeles Lakers. Heard it here first from uh, Dante Jones hey. on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. It's my opinion. Uh, we wanted to talk about some other players, but who cares? Because let's just really just about LeBron. Yeah, at the yeah. End of the day. You're fine. <laughs> okay, but really quickly before you go, do you think that the Lakers make the playoffs? Yes. Do they lose in the first round? Depends on the seeding. If they can move up to seven, and now you got like Denver. 
I think they can take that Ooh. Denver in seven games. Okay, and that'll give them confidence. And that gives them confidence. Like and then that. now you don't know who. Now, now you don't know what happens then because now if if the young guys get playoff confidence, you think they can make Stars it are seven? built in the playoffs. I think they. I think they can. They can seven. Seven and eight are not that far apart. You know, that Vegas is not even giving them a chance to make the playoffs. That's cool. Vegas I, knows everything. Nah. Mm-mm. Vegas Mm-mm. can tell the future. Vegas didn't think he's gonna get a ring. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have to do Vegas right? Yeah, no, right. ain't no way Vegas thought they was getting the ring. He I got one though. I didn't think I was getting the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you gotta get a job. Right. <laughs> um, Stars well, aligned for me. You know what, I mean? what two pieces do the Lakers need to get to get past Golden State? Um, Assuming LeBron stays healthy and everything else is fine. Any combination of AD and Kimba, AD and Kyrie, AD and but they gotta get AD. I think AD is a, a piece that you have to try your hardest to get because he's young. His youth and his ability on the court, like you have to you have to try your hardest to get somebody of his stature. And then you can put a guard next to those two and work it out. Yeah. Because the guards that we're fair. talking we'll about or yeah. can shoot the ball, like can really catch and shoot, Kyrie and Kimba. So, and, then, and let's say like Kawhi is like, you know what? I've been a Laker fan silently my whole life. Then you got a you got something. Well, real I mean, Kawhi, over there. LeBron, and AD is ridiculous. Like that's that's a Golden State Some level, uh, yeah, yeah uh, assembly. But I'm not it, uh, it, it, it appears that AD is the piece that they need most most yeah. most of all. Yeah. I'm the last question. <laughs> LeBron wearing too many hats because I think he's wearing too many hats. Why he just put he's putting out an album next next Friday with with uh, A and R Two Chains album. He got I, I see him everywhere and I'm so happy to see him and I'm I'm a big fan. And I'm so glad that he's spreading the wealth and educating and and empowering so many people. But I don't know if he's going to win championship with all this, with his focus on all this other stuff. Okay. The the day. Of an athlete exists what from nine to three on the court, okay. nine to two, nine to one thirty. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Let's keep it. Let's yeah, keep it. Let's, real. let's talk about LeBron's schedule. Nine to one thirty. All right, but what's LeBron's schedule? Let's tell me. Hold on, hold on. Nine to one thirty. Let's talk to a normal athlete. Okay. What I get into from one thirty, let's say to midnight. Mm-hmm. I can get into some negative stuff. Or I can get into some positive stuff. Okay. When the athlete does something crazy, like hang out all night long or or party and do all these right, things, right. that's a problem. I, I'm fine with it. Do more, you know? Do do as many projects as you want. Just do more. Just stay happy. You can't do more. I, just don't, can't I, don't, do more. I think that people are ridiculous with that. Like, stay it, happy. You, first of all, just because he signs I'm off happy on he's something. Happy. I'm happy he's here. Like he's executive producing. Okay, so he watched the final cut. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> How many how I mean, many what, hours like, did like, he spend like, in the studio? Like, like he was out there I, like hey LeBron, you putting wanna do the beat this? together you wanna do this? and like yeah, okay. And then he watches I mean, the end of it. And he's like, yeah, it's good. Put my name on it. Yeah, listen to this. Oh, what you like? Oh, I like the drums. I like how yeah. you came here. Like, yeah. call me how the much, executive I, How much producer. input do you think he went? He went, to, he went in there and created some stuff. Okay, come on, man. It'll be interesting. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Dante Jones. Appreciate LeBron James is his friend. Yes, not the other way around. Very important that everyone knows that. Yes, Dante makes the calls. No, not at all. <laughs> like, I ain't talked to him in a minute either. Like, I, I've, been, I've been working and been working. he's working. Yes. And it's like, cold in LA. Yeah, going man. Outside. It's yeah. raining in LA. Uh, Traffic is bad. Like, oh. yeah. uh, we're not complaining about the weather, by the way. We know the rest of the country is getting right. slammed with bad weather. Uh, we appreciate California very much. Like it's stuff <laughs> but, you know. but anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, we'll have you again you. on soon uh, if you'll have us. And uh, yeah. Bye. Hopefully I'll see you next year because I only get an invite once a year. But uh, uh, thank you for having me. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> thank you. With it. With it. With it. Quit. What? With it. We about to turn up in this bitch. What am I winning or quitting today? Okay. 15 months after Colin Kaepernick filed grievance under the CBA for collusion against the NFL owners, he, Eric Reed, and The Shield agreed to settle. The terms of the settlement are hidden behind a confidentiality agreement, but joy, the NFL is smart for settling with Kaepernick. Quit it or quit it. Oh, uh, yes, they are smart for settling with Kaepernick. It's a woke decision to make. That is the best decision that the NFL could have made. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it is quite revealing and does not make anything go away, which is True. a good thing for all of us mm-hmm. out in the content world. Um, I think it would have been nice for some people to actually physically see the evidence of the collusion. Yes. Now, uh, legally... They didn't admit to the collusion oh, no, through you, the settlement. That's why you have to settle. 
Because you don't have to do anything in the settlement. Right. So it's like, we're not technically saying we colluded, but we feel compelled to give you millions and millions and millions of dollars, although we aren't saying that we colluded. So technically, there was no collusion. All the rest of us feel like if you didn't have any evidence of collusion, right. why would you settle? Now, yeah, a lot case. of those cases, you know, in civil settlements, that's an unfair assumption. In this case, the NFL has shown that they are willing to go to extreme lengths to persecute even their biggest star um, mm. of the last 20 years for something that scientifically could have just been a little accident. What are you talking about? Uh, Deflategate. I mean, oh, they destroyed the character of Tom Brady and tried to, to completely ruin his legacy over some deflated footballs, which in all fairness, I think was did, did happen. I did think that they deflated the football. Oh, yeah, they I did. I think that they were deflated to within the legal space. Right. And I think that's pretty obvious it considering the, the fact that the second half of that game was a complete destroyance. Yes. And... Uh, They've been fine ever since. So I really don't feel like it's clear everyone doesn't care about the flake gate anymore, although it was the biggest story in sports for like a year and a half. Way too long, too. Way too long. Yeah. Um, but the point is they are willing to go to extreme lengths to prove their points. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to do that to Tom Brady, they got the biggest thing is they have long money. Like in any legal case, yeah. it, the per, usually the person with the longer money in a civil case situation like these, they usually win because they can just fight this in court forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. And the NFL is owned by all billionaires who have a, a lot of money, all yeah. of them together. Billions um, of dollars, right. So Kaepernick doesn't have billions of dollars backing mm -hmm. him. I'm not positive if the... Players Union is involved with that, but the, they were involved with Tom Brady's case right. in, in defending him. And that was also part of the reason why he ended up folding and taking the suspension because he didn't want to drain funds, any more funds from right. the Players Association or Players Union uh, legal fund. Right. So the fact that they settled, to me, widely revealing. And they ha to me, it just says they had something of some significance that the NFL did not want revealed at the next level of court if they didn't settle mm -hmm. here. So, Is there anything else that, that we don't already know, though? Because like, the facts as they're laid out to us just by hearsay and what we've read up until this point, that's enough for Kaepernick to win a collusion case. That's why this swift settlement feels very damning to the NFL because they clearly had things that were going to make it so Kaepernick was going to get paid out regardless. I mean, he just, he deserved the money that he got. Like, that's that's yeah. the bottom line in all of this. And I do think he got a lot of money. I think the, the $20, $30 million range, I don't think that that's what it was. Are I think it was serious? much closer to the it's 80, get leaked 80 to the $100 million range. Yeah. That That's that's my impression of it. Because what he could and his lawyers could argue is that they not only took away his immediate income, mm -hmm. but future income. And they could have all, also argued, you know, this is a... A uh, quarterback who has been to the Super Bowl was mm -hmm. back within a game of going back to the Super Bowl, a uh, throw away from winning a Super Bowl, and had he continued to play, possibly got back on track. Right. Um, you can use actual examples to show that you messed up future income for years and years to come. Definition if, of character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they. that's why I think it's on the higher ends of this. But the bigger picture is this. Uh, the story's not going away just because the settlement happens. Right. That's... That's not a thing. Mm -hmm. It's 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 still going to be talked about. Right away, his lawyer started talking about maybe he's going to end up with Charlotte or uh, I mean Patriots. Uh, yeah, possibly. Charlotte or or with uh, with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I don't think either of those things, um, Charlotte, Carolina, uh, yeah. either of those things are going to happen. But I think it's just his lawyer mm -hmm. talking. But also, I just don't. I don't. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Like he he got his money, which I 100 percent support. Mm -hmm. What else are you suing for? And I know people will say, well, you should have fought it and exposed them. And to me, the exposure is there. Like, it's it's an L for the NFL. This is an admission this, of guilt this, this, by this, the NFL. Right. It's not yeah. legally. It's not actually. Yes. But the NFL has such long money that if there was really actually nothing, why wouldn't you just continue to fight it forever? Because the story's never going, no. literally never going away. No. It's going to be in history books. Mm -hmm. Our children's children will read about this. So... What? Why not argue it to the end to show that this didn't happen? In my, that's in my opinion. Now we also know that there are conversations that happen in every business on every level, and you could call all of those conversations collusion. 
100%. if you really get into the technical term of what is collusion. Yeah. I don't think that there was like a grand meeting of the owners and it was like, we shall not allow him to pass. And then the mallet comes down. You don't think so? And the curtains rise and like <laughs> the ravens are released. It's not that it's not that deep. Okay. Like they don't have the recording of that. And they're like, we really can't let this out because like YouTube is going to crash. Based with on all the amount the of money that you're saying that they give Kaepernick, it may have been that big. What is that to the NFL though? That's fair. I mean, what is that? That's fair. All right, what's next? Okay, Antonio Brown and the Steelers president, Art Rooney, finally sat down to talk about what went wrong during his nine years in Pittsburgh. After the meeting, Brown, a.k.a. Mr. Big Chess, tweeted, We both agree that it's time to move on. Joy, Antonio Brown is single-handedly ruining the Steelers' season next year. Quit it or quit it. Uh, I'm going to quit it because he is not single-handedly doing any of this. Uh, I have a question. Am I missing something with the Mr. Big Chess thing? Um, is there something over my head? Uh, I mean, are we missing something with the blonde mustache? No. Are we missing I get, something I get, with I the new I understand hairdo? The, I understand all that. Oh, it, you do? Oh, yeah. I, I'm. It's a new self-given nickname, right? That's what yes. right, I'm, saying, I'm 100% right. out on self-given nicknames. Oh, I, but you like the Black Mamba. Uh, like, I've always wanted a nickname. And the Prince of Privilege. Um, well, I'm pri- we gave you that nickname. I, yeah, I, I gave you that name. He yeah. likes to think, he's so privileged that he likes he to think that he gave himself nickname. a nickname. I, know. I, know. I heard him talking about his girlfriend the other day. I was like, all right, whatever. Hello. Yeah, There's I mean, it's, it's, it's on, <laughs> it's, it makes sense. Okay, but I, I'm out, I've am i always wanted a nickname, and I and no nicknames stick because my first name is so short. Yeah. So sometimes and people call me JT, but it's like that. Any name that's like a shorter version of your actual name, I don't consider to be a nickname. Right. But what if you had a nickname? What would you make? What would you make? Like your B nickname is not B? your nickname. No. That's the first no. letter of your first name. Yeah, it's accurate. B new. Is that a nickname? No, because that's the first letter Still in the first name. three letters <laughs> yeah, of yeah. his name. And it's something that's completely not your name. Like your parents did not name you Prince of Privilege. Oh, my brother calls me Jonathan. You and your brother have some stuff going on. <laughs> Uh, that's a, that's anyway, anyway the point is, Mr. Big Chess, I feel like Mr. Big Chess is not going to stick. Um, I'm going to make it stick. I will say this about Antonio Brown. What? Um, while he's creating a lot of noise and he's doing a lot of tweeting, and there were a lot of things that happened um, before the season and then uh, towards the end of the season, and then obviously since the season has ended, that would point to Antonio Brown is a troublemaker and mm. he's just a lot of noise and a lot of trouble and it's not worth it. First of all, he is worth it. Okay. Just let's everyone know. Everyone's seen like a. Yeah. We haven't seen some football lately. Antonio Brown is still the best receiver in the league. If yes. he's not the best, he's the second best. Right. If you like Julio Jones more or the third, if you like Odell more. But they're all really interchangeable as mm-hmm. the best. Okay, And that's just a matter of opinion at, at the top. For some years now. Um, and I really feel like Antonio Brown is the best. But, yeah, he comes with a personality, as most diva wide receivers do. and Most wide receivers. Most wide receivers do. And he's worth every penny. And the Steelers are not going to be better without him next year. Yes, I realize they have Juju Smith-Schuster, and they have Switzer, and they have James Washington, and they're going to get some other pieces, and they're really good at drafting receivers, and all that's fine and nice, but you don't just replace Antonio Brown. That's not how it works. You don't just replace Le'Veon Bell. And for everyone who keeps saying that, oh, well, you know, James Conner, I have one question. I just forgot. Did they make the playoffs this year? Because they didn't make the playoffs this year. This year. They didn't make the playoffs this year. So, yeah, nope. you did miss Le'Veon Bell. Did. Okay? You, you didn't make the playoffs this year. So, my whole point, and I was getting a little pushback on this, and I just like to remind everyone that I don't care. Um... <laughs> Is that it's not it's reminder. not about Antonio Brown and the situation with the Steelers. And he's he met with Art Rooney, he said they're moving on. Yeah. Okay. It's a culture breakdown in Pittsburgh. That is the problem. Mm-hmm. The fact that Antonio Brown feels like he can talk this way about this organization, he can do the things that he's doing, which I overall don't have a problem with because this is what he feels like he needs to do. Right is the Steelers' problem. It starts from the top. If you are the leader of an organization, in no situation can you come out and do anything but take full responsibility for everything that happens, good and bad. That's how it works. That's how it works. And everyone was like, oh, Ben Roethlisberger always takes, he always takes the blame for everything. No, he doesn't. He takes the blame a, a lot. He takes the blame a he lot. He passes it around. He, but he also no passes it around, yeah. right? And that's not saying that Ben Roethlisberger isn't a Hall of Famer. Right. Uh, that's not saying that he, he is. Uh, is not a great quarterback or he that is. he hasn't been a great leader or that he hasn't won Super Bowls. All those things are facts. Yeah. He can also have flaws. Well, the cultural breakdown for the Steelers is one thing because we all in, within families have our issues. But when those became become public right. from a big piece of that and demanding that they need to be moved and saying other things in Facebook Lives like, if you don't have good camaraderie, if your team if your team's full of haters, then I don't want to be there. That doesn't feel like a reaction to where he's coming from. Like those things coming out in public 
are ruining the season before it even gets started, right. in my opinion. But that's not all on Antonio Brown, is what I'm saying. Like, a lot of this is getting put on Antonio Brown because people don't know how okay. to absorb personalities. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like it's some of Antonio Brown's fault. It's some of Ben Roethlisberger's fault. And I think the biggest chunk of fault goes to Mike Tomlin because mm. he is the one who's supposed to create the environment and create the culture and then be on the same page with Ben Roethlisberger to institute that culture. Look at what wins. Yeah. That's what happens. Everyone has to be on the same page. We say it all the time. Football is the ultimate team sport. You can't pick and choose. You can treat everybody differently, but you have to treat everybody fairly. Mm. And when you're not doing that, mm. then other people start to take notice of it. And Hell it creates yeah. chaos because everyone has an ego. It's a lot to manage that many egos. Okay? It's a lot to manage my own ego. I can't imagine <laughs> ma managing that many egos. It takes a, it takes a great skill. Yeah. But it also takes a great understanding. And, and the person at the top has to have that understanding. And then it goes down from there. Antonio Brown's never going to be bigger than the quarterback. And if you are bigger than the quarterback, you're in a bad situation. Because Odell Beckham, you, Giants. You, yes, that's not a good situation. No. So he was in a good situation with a dependent, playing a dependent position with Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know where he's going to end up. Hopefully in a situation where he is playing with a good quarterback so we can see more of his skill utilized yeah. in uh, he's on the, field, the NFL. You see right. But Overall, I think there's plenty of blame to go, go around, and it starts with the culture that it is in Pittsburgh. And by the way, I'm from Pittsburgh, so for all you Steeler fans who are flipping out, calling me a hater, just, just dismiss me with it. She's right. speaking what she knows. Boy, I, for, I, I still knows. have a 412 phone number. Just relax. Oh, hey, shouts out. Yeah. Okay. Last summer, Odell Beckham Jr. signed a five-year, $90 million contract extension with the New York Giants, and now there is growing speculation that the Giants may be interested in trading OBJ during the offseason. Joy... Odell Beckham Jr. will help a team get to the playoffs next season. Win it or quit it? Uh, I will win it. I do think he is going to be traded. Yeah. That, now that's interesting enough. Because that's making two teams much better. Because if you're trading ODBJ, you're getting a lot back. Are you? You have to. What's a why, lot? Why would you do Are you going to get, like, you're going to get a first round pick? First round pick. A, 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 role, a role player that, that to fill a spot. And... Something else. I'll take a coach too. Are you? Are you, are you really gonna get all that? Ninety million, five five year deal. What are you trading for if you're not gonna get something back? I mean, you are gonna get something back, but a new quarterback. I, I don't. I don't know how much you're actually going to get back okay. for Odell. Like, why you do you think they didn't crazy. trade it then? Um, I. You know what? It depends on what the Giants do this year. Like, if they take a quarterback in the draft, mm -hmm. which they obviously should. Obviously, they should take a quarterback. We can stop pretending it's getting ridiculous at this point. But like, but. There are other quarterbacks out there that can do better than some of the quarterbacks in this draft. I'm just saying that. Okay, but you still need a quarterback, yes, so just yes. take one because mm -hmm. one of those draft picks that you're going to, t to that you have is going to end up being a bust. Mm -hmm. So just risk it and take a quarterback because you need one. It's not gonna make a difference. Eli Manning is done. We're done with Eli Manning. Thank you for the, the many years. Thank you for beating the Patriots those two times. It was very important to me personally, especially the one uh, yes. where you kept them from going undefeated. Mm -hmm. Very important to me. So I, I I think you're a Hall of Famer just for that. Eli, but we're done here. We're done with the Eli Manning thing. Like we're all in agreement. We all agree on that, right? Yeah. And thanks for the Visa commercials with Saquon. Yeah, like great little, commercials. Those great are, commercials. Like those. Uh, many years like of great those. commercials with your brother. Please oh, continue yeah. to do them. Yes. They're very clever. They're very funny. Um, I can't off the top of my head remember any of them, but I, I laughed at all of them. Anyway, <laughs> the more important thing is uh, the Patriots were the ones who were pushing for Odell last mm -hmm. season, and had that happened, wow. What a different world we would live in right now. I mean, the Patriots still won the Super Bowl, so our lives are still ruined. But yes, but of course. Tom Brady with Odell, if that were to still happen, I don't know. Like, it's almost at the point now where could he be successful with a receiver like Odell? Because he's so used to playing with like I would say this. Julian Edelman. There there's a there's a mix because Tom Brady has found success in a big way with top route receivers like Randy Moss, but also let's not forget Chad Ochocinco slash Chad Johnson went over to the Patriots and didn't exactly know what he was yeah. doing, but he was still a big name on that roster. So it honestly depends on how much of an actual football mind and player that Odell Beckham is. I, I actually think that he would be a great fit in that regard. I know people I think, think so. like personalities don't work with the Patriots, mm -hmm. and my argument is always I give you Gronkowski. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, personalities work with the Patriots. Gronkowski, Gronk, Gronk isn't even, he's not even on a first name basis. He's on a half of his last name basis, okay? <laughs> he's just, that's, that's, he's just Gronk. 
<laughs> and you don't even have to explain yourself. You just say Gronk, and everyone knows who you're talking yes, about and what exactly. comes with it. Yeah. So he has been able to be himself in that environment because he's also a hard worker. Yeah. And he's clearly shown that he can keep a relationship with Tom Brady. And I think that Odell is a workout warrior. Like he's, I don't think he's a guy who's lazy. Yeah. I think he's a guy that works hard in practice. And I think that he may have some moments where he comes across as being selfish or like the celebrations, whatever, which I obviously don't care about. But, no. you know, weird, crusty people care about that. Right. But the point is, he I think he can get into a place where he would fit into that system. Like he could ha have his personality and be who he is. And they I think they really just care about doing your job. Like yeah. at the end of the day, it's do your job. So yeah. I, I, mean, I think he works there. You can criticize him for caring too much about social media. And I would say when you say he's a workout warrior, I'm like, yeah, it's all social media content. He would do anything for a great video and some good likes and clicks. Well, you got you to work out to do that. that. Yes, exactly. But we, haven't, we don't see Kaepernick putting out a lot of workout videos. I'm just saying. Yes, he does. I, I, we don't see a lot. We don't see much Odell. I'm just saying. I'm just saying there may be questions about what he cares about the most in, in the Patriots locker room. Caring about football the most is the best way to succeed. So. It's not. It's not as clear as a. Uh, obviously, plug and play, the Patriots but. felt that way because they were pushing. They were apparently pushing for him hard this he's season. He's young. He's, he but. can change at any point in time. Twenty six years old. We'll see. I just want to see him with a quarterback that is competent. Can again. throw it to him. Yeah. Down the field. Yes. 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 Yeah. Hear ye, hear ye. Charles Barkley is petty. Mm. Um. So uh, we love Chuck. Oh. Gotta love right. Chuck. One of the greatest television uh, hosts of all time. Yes. If you in, guys in the history of television. Yes. If you have any critiques about the way I broadcast I come from the school of Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley. Yeah. yes um, which is smart because he's really good mm -hmm. but he's talking about uh, he has a problem with this player mobility thing he's not into it he's he's down on Anthony Davis right now he said uh, you don't ruin your reputation reputation is a good play great player uh, he's one of the nicest guys in the world remember your agent works for you you don't work for him he mm. handled the situation wrong it's gonna come back to bite him in the ass it's unfortunate because like I said before the season I thought he was the second best player in the world he's a great person um, blah 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 uh, he says it's a bad situation. It's a bad look for the NBA because he can't go out there and give it 100% because he's worried about getting hurt. The Pelicans ain't trying to win. And you already see he's had less than three points in the last few weeks. It's ridiculous. I hear all these clowns on TV saying mm. it's great that players are getting all this power. Let me tell you guys something. Workers are never going to have power over their ownership ever. It might work for a couple guys, but in the history of the world, no owners have overtaken or workers have overtaken people who own the business. And when these guys are sitting home locked out in a couple years, I want you to remember I told y'all that. So there's a lot going on there. Um, I disagree. I, I don't think that there is ever a situation where talent is going to have less power overall than ownership because at the end of the day, um, and, I, and I think about this a lot because there's always conversations about contracts and taking less money or taking money and who mm -hmm. has power and who doesn't. At the end of the day, uh, you can say, uh, and I was really thinking about this with the Kaepernick thing, like you can say like, oh, this is my platform. Okay, that's just cool. So, do you think that we're going to start seriously watching the AAF, like, for real, for real, and spending the money that we spend on the NFL if all of the NFL players decide we're not, we're not going to do that anymore? Now, for a little while, we might, like, just because yeah. we want to watch some football. But at the end of the day, we're going to be like, yeah, I'd like to see some actual uh, talent again. Yeah, get where, can, we get, can we make that happen? Yeah. Do you remember when, like, we didn't have NFL referees oh. for a couple of weeks? Do you remember mm. that? My boy Golden ate that. That was the NFL <laughs> referees, okay? We have been accustomed to a certain level of talent in a certain product, mm -hmm. okay? We've been spoiled with this, okay? <laughs> so this idea that the number one top players in any league don't actually run the platform it is nonsense. Like, yes, I do understand how ownership and workers and employee whatever relationships are, but when it comes to talent, it's just different. Like, yeah. you can say what you want, but the economy went down, not just for the Cavs owner, Dan Gilbert, when LeBron left, for the entire city when LeBron left. Okay? Yeah. They are now in, they are now one of the worst teams in the league. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just like that. So you can't tell me that LeBron doesn't have that kind of power and he is exercising it. And Anthony Davis doesn't have LeBron power, but he's, he's kind of close because if he doesn't get to L.A., then the situation with LeBron and the Lakers, who are a powerful organization that influence a very large city, 
things are going to matter. Like there's going to be a lot of unhappy people. So overall, I don't agree that there aren't major, major influences and power from players over ownerships and over leagues when it gets to this level. Like there's just too much money involved and too much talent. I mean, even Dante talking about, can you imagine the the playoffs without LeBron James? Ah, ah, no, ah, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. No, that's worse I don't want to do that. We just I don't watched. want to do that. Yeah. Who wants to do that? Nobody. Nobody wants to do that. The league doesn't want that. Like the advertisers don't want that. Mm-mm. Nobody wants that. So I'm sorry for that really annoying noise. I don't know why I came out like that, but I really it was important. So that's why I made it sound like that because it's emphasized. So <laughs> overall, good. like I, I disagree it. with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I get what he's trying to say about Anthony Davis's reputation, right. but I just don't feel like Anthony Davis's reputation has taken a hit. Like I don't think any less of Anthony Davis in this situation. He gave an organization a heads up, which is more than most players do yeah. when they leave somewhere, and he's given what he could to that organization, and they didn't give it back. Like he well, just gave well, the courtesy of lying, saying that everyone's on the table for him to get traded. Like, he's giving you guys what right. you want. And, and, like, maybe uh, Clutch Sports was a little aggressive in that spot, but, like, aggressive wins, dude. Like, I don't have a problem with any anything. That, uh, the only issue I had was that all the tr- all the trades were being leaked because I felt like that influenced mm-hmm. the, the mentality of young players. It wasn't a good look. But, like, at the end of the day, that ain't on him. it's not on Anthony Davis. No. So I, I get what he's trying to say as far as that goes. I disagree about the players having power. They do have the power. They have more power than they think. And in the NFL, too. And that's why I think there's definitely going to be a lot out the next time a CBA comes up for the NFL. Mm. There's just, I mean, there's just things that need to change. With more, more, more money? Um, no, you could start with lifetime benefits because you know uh, it's a collision sport. I, I, I can. That makes billions of dollars. Oh, you're in the NFL. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 I mean, I has I lifetime benefits. NBA. No. I mean, has lifetime benefits. Okay, okay, no. Okay. It's time for high key, low key. All right, high key, low key. I, I do this every week. This is heck. We already have a thing. So right, I just I just talk about it. All right, so uh <laughs> two two chains and LeBron have an album coming out. Yes. High key I'm hype. Low key, stop telling LeBron to do less things. It's really gonna be okay. Ah. I know that's not the high key Loki you were expecting. Oh. You're expecting me to say LeBron needs to do less, but um two chains tweeted, uh, it's been quite the journey to get here. All night studio sessions for reflecting and opening up on these records, as I call it therapy. So maybe he's just talking about himself. Yeah, um, yes. This is my each one teach one body of work. I want to celebrate hey. black excellence. Hey. Rap or go to the league. The album A&R by King James. Um, <clears throat> what, is that, what does that mean? LeBron listened to it last. LeBron Told him some some artists he should put on. Him. I think that LeBron and him some had a had a nice uh, brunch or you know maybe an early dinner. Opened a nice bottle of wine. Had a conversation about doing it. Thought it was a good idea. Then uh, two chains uh, went in the in the studio, did the work, sent LeBron no. you know via phone a couple of the tracks. LeBron listened like ooh banger return no, let's no, no, use no. that one and then at the end of the day it was minimal involvement by lebron and then he put his no, name on this it. isn't some random person out of cleveland this is two chains arguably top five rappers for a lot of people active rappers right now he was putting out an album with some heat on it anyway for him to just loop in lebron james and give him an a and r title like there has to be something to it i just hope that the album smacks as much as uh Pretty goes like trap music because that um, was yes. a classic. I do, I do hope that it's a good album. I think it will be, yeah. and I'm okay with it. I know everyone's freaking out about LeBron doing all this extra stuff. It's it's, it's like Dante said, they've got some time in, mm-hmm. in the day mm-hmm. to fill up with doing things. Could be doing negative things instead of you just doing a lot of projects. We knew that's why he came to to Los Angeles. It's going to be okay um, as long as it makes playoffs. If he doesn't, then uh, no. Low key, he should have been doing all that. It's a little little, little, little different. All right, so the NBA has announced it is backing a new professional league in Africa. High key, yes. Yes. Low key, yes. Yes. So it's a. It was born of a collaboration between the NBA and FIBA. It's a 12-team league that will begin in January of 2020, and uh, former U.S. President Barack Obama, that's how it's written here, it's actually the only U.S. President uh, that we acknowledge, Barack Obama, is going to have direct involvement with his operations. So we know that there's going to be a lot of press with this. It's awesome. True African American, you know what I mean? Like he, he's he's out here. This uh, is this is huge. Yeah, so it's going to be Angola, Egypt, Kenya, Morocco, uh, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, South Africa, and um, Tunisia. 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 Like a little 
like some, like your like cousin. Tunisia. Yeah. yeah like, okay. Tunisia. Um, anyway. Tunisia. No nation will have more than two teams in the league, but I'm excited about it. All right. And finally, high key. Uh, well, China is going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, high key. Uh, yes, of course. Low key. I feel like this should have happened like immediately. It was only neat. three years, but I feel like it's been it's like taken oh, it's longer for her passing. to get into the Hall yes, of Fame. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, I mean yes, she yes. passed three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, China, I am not a huge WWE fan, but I I did love China. She's a staple. Back in '97, it was on still. Like when she she came into the to the game, pro wrestling game in '97. Like Bret Hart was up there, Undertaker. Like it was like the this was golden like, era. This was, yeah, this was like the time in wrestling where you could do whatever you wanted. Oh and yeah. If you watch old wrestling, there there was someone tweeted me a, a wrestling clip the other day. And it was just literally, I can't remember who it was, but it was just wrestlers just throwing women in bikinis around around the... the, the like out of the ring the or ring, in the ring? In just, the ring, just, throw, just drop kicking women. And it okay, like, well, no, okay. It's, that, it's like, what? It was probably Trish Stratus, like, who, who probably how? said some... Sh- like, this you know insane. what I mean? She popped off. Like, there's, she's literally in a bikini. Like, how is this even <laughs> happening? Um, but but uh, it actually might have been. Uh, but anyway, China was awesome, so well yes. deserved. The ninth wonder of the world. Shouts out, China. Uh, yeah. That was her nickname. These are power rankings. Damn These are power rankings. These are the losers of the week. You have to redo the whole thing. No, we uh, you lost. <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah, you missed your chance. All right, so uh, let's start with baseball contracts. So Manny Machado got a three hundred million dollar ten year contract with the San Diego Padres. What's the figures on that? That's three hundred million dollars for ten years. To mm. play baseball for the San Diego Padres, um, deserved I guess. Like Manny Machado is is a superstar right. in MLB and a great player, and he was going to make a ton of money. Now Bryce Harper has not signed yet, and he is going to probably want more. Uh, also, the other yeah. like main transcendent star of MLB in general is Bryce Harper, so deserved also. But the conversation last week was like they're not going to get these 10-year contracts they're talking about. Clearly, people are still doing that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have any problem with any athlete making any amount of money whatsoever. Because here's the thing. Uh, they, I don't make less money because they do. So it just doesn't, right. it's not how it works. It doesn't affect your pockets. It doesn't affect me uh, in any way. So I don't care. Um, and in general, I'm not interested in saving owners money. It's not something I'm concerned about. Yeah, give it to us. At all. But I don't think a 10-year contracts are logical. We don't even keep presidents for 10 years. <laughs> Okay, you no, got to get up out of here God. after eight years. Yes. Uh, th- that's just not how it works. So uh, in this case, hopefully it's four. <sighs> Please God, um, uh, just it's very serious. Hashtag vote. Um, ha- hashtag vote in the states that matter. Um, more importantly, anyway, the the point is, I don't understand why they're still doing t- uh, ten year contracts. Very happy that they're making money. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I just don't. I don't understand ten years from now how that's going to be logical. I, I mean, him in the San Diego Sun. He'll be he'll be okay. Ten years in San Diego is more like a hard six, seven. Yeah, anywhere else? Yeah, because it's San Diego. Yeah. San Diego is just the most chill place on earth. Oh, you guys gotta go. It's too chill for me. You guys gotta I, go. Don't come to LA. I go to San Diego. Too, I am too high strung for San Diego. I can't do any place that's like, yeah, we don't just do whatever today. <laughs> yeah. No, like I have a, I have a do whatever day, but we can't just do that every day. Like there's certain yeah. beach towns where people are just like, what are you doing today? I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know like, how San do Diego work? makes money. I don't know how they make money. I mean, money. yeah, I thought, I thought about working today, but yeah, I called it, man, because it's just rather just chill. Yeah. So you can't work every day. We're, yeah, we'll, we will work tomorrow. Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. We come from cities where you have to work to, to earn a living. Like, right. Everyone comes out here from the Midwest. They're like, they're like, what are these people doing outside? Like, Does anyone go to work? Right. Does anyone go to work? It's like, oh, kind of. They, yeah, it, they kind of work. I don't understand it. Yeah. It's just, it's even talking about it gives me anxiety. All right. Uh, next is uh, the French have made uh, lightsabering a sport. Yeah. I guess an attempt to make fencing more appealing to kids. <laughs> Which is... Fencing is actually low-key badass. Oh, I would thank you. love to be awesome at fencing. Yes. I don't know where you go to fence. I'll tell you right now. I'm wearing my Ball State stuff today, but Notre Dame, one of the number one fencing schools... Out there, you want to be a champion, you'll be a national champion out there, kids. You work, watch the lightsaber, and come to Notre Dame, get you a ship because we fence out here. Okay, that surprises no one. Um, <laughs> on guard, yeah, yeah, I was about to say, on guard. I, mean, I just feel like I got the elbow swing down, like <laughs> it's like violent tennis, <laughs> but they're so it's so weird, right? Like, it's like a weird. 
I mean, it's a weird thing. It's like yeah. how how do you come upon upon can I, fencing? Can I, can, I, can I can I stand up and fence real quick? No, because it's just not it's not enough room in the movie. We gotta we gotta finish it. What's the movie? Um, is it is it not not yeah? Is it Yes Man? What do you mean? Oh, which one? Yes Man? No, not Does Yes, yes man. man. Have that's the one. With, what's uh, the movie where the, he he doesn't have a he doesn't? No, that's yeah, that's the wrong. I'm thinking yes. of the wrong movie. Holy what's, man. What's the movie where he doesn't have a best man? Paul Rudd. I love you, man. I love you, man. Thank don't you. Don't they fence yes. in that? He does fencing in that. I don't know. I haven't That's seen it in a long time. That's based in California. That was a really good movie, though. That was based in what was wrestling? Uh, Rashida Jones was great in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, she was. Anyway, uh, that we're completely off the point. The point is that they're, they've made lightsabers an official sport. Lightsabering is not a sport. First of all, I am a huge nerd. Okay. okay. I've admitted it. I love Star Wars. Okay, I've seen every Star Wars movie except for Solo. So why are you hating? I, I it's love, on Netflix. Solo's on Netflix. I know. Just I just it. haven't gotten around to watching it. Roma's on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet. Like I'm trying to finish Punisher. Anyway. Yes. Uh, the you know the thing. Mm-hmm. Stop taking yourself so seriously. It's very fresh. Like Star Wars nerds, Star Star Wars nerds and Star Trek nerds. I really have a very low patience for because I like Star Wars, but it's like you believe in Star Wars, right. all right? And that's a right. fundamental problem. <laughs> I mean, I, like I, you can't base your life philosophies on Star Wars. Arguably, yes. If you build your life around Star Wars, it, that's that's a very privileged thing to do. If you have the option to do so, then do it. You know, if you can build around it, I just want Star Wars and Star Trek fans to just battle out so we can only talk about one of them. Like only one should exist. The- I've been saying that for years. Just give me one, because I got confused a, at one point. We cannot have a faction of society that's Star Trek nerds and Star Wars nerds. No. And just to be clear, I am a Star Wars nerd. I don't have time for Star Trek. I don't have time for the, the, the beam me down. Or what was it? Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, beam me up, Scotty. Anyway, the point is it's not sports. It's and just, the guy from The Reading Rainbow just stop was it. in. Was we're, the... we're trying hard enough to, to convince people that cheerleading is a sport. Kunta. Okay. Uh <laughs> He was in it. Kunta Kente is in it. If we're choosing one, we should definitely choose one with the black people in it. I'm just saying, I hear you. I hear you. I agree with you, but just We're, saying. we're going with Star Wars. Yes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but it's not sport. Not sport. Uh, finally, the All-Star Game was this weekend. Yes. Uh, had lots of fun moments. Anthony Hamilton remixed the National Anthem, but I love Anthony Hamilton, so I don't have a problem with it. Right. I know that's not doesn't make any sense because usually I can't stand that, but uh, he did a good job. And the National Anthem at the All-Star Game has become a thing now. Oh yeah, yeah. show the Fergie. Yes, she made a thing. Uh, <laughs> okay, we didn't need that. But anyway, um, there was uh, Jay Cole missed a dunk. Okay, did, did you act like it was like a plan. No, he, he missed the impromptu on making he, the dunk. He missed the impromptu dunk. Everyone has seen it. Okay, he got up there. All right, it was a very great attempt. I actually like it. I think it's more like Jay Cole is to not make the the the, the dunk. I did. I. That place would have went nuts if he did. It would have been an all-time moment. <laughs> yes. But I think it actually makes more sense for J. Cole not to make the dunk. Yeah, that, 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 uh, the yeah. dunk contest was fun. I love the Shaq dunk. It was fun. Yes. The hi, How you jump over Shaq and hang in the rim on your elbow. True that. True that. True that. 100%. I love that. I, I agree with you. First uh, dunk contest player to win who came from the G League. I love all that. But until you put actual stars in there to do the exact same dunks we saw, I'm not interested. I need stars doing it. Like Zion next year, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, like they I, I'm, need, I'm with you on that, I but I just thought the, I thought the dunks were good. They were, they were, the they were. They were creative. Good. Yeah, um, other than the plain thing. Anyway, on, the man. weekend was fun, but it, it just is a constant reminder of how much better the NBA at All-Star Game is than every other major sports All-Star Game. It's just miles ahead of it in Every department, like the NBA All Star Weekend, like looks like a fun place to be. Oh my god! Like gosh. if you're a fan, or if you're in the business, if you just like the smile, like, yeah. If you just like like fun things, yes. it looks like a fun place to be. Like normal places, like uh the the bank in wherever the NBA All Star Game is, seems like a more fun place to be. That's how fun it looks. They should have it at a bank just to test it out. Right, like you may even be like you're like at the DMV in the city. Yes. Like yeah, like it's just better here this it's weekend. Lit. Yeah, like I don't feel like I've been here as long like it's a normal less no, normal two hours yeah that really was in charlotte like an hour 45 yeah exactly exactly <laughs> charlotte, so North Carolina. this is my solution because the mlb all-star weekend is it, it's baseball so it's whatever but i do enjoy the home run derby yes okay i don't fun. care about the game at all but mm-hmm. the home run derby is fun now i don't necessarily want to be where the mlb all-star game is because i don't care but the, the home run derby Let's is in fun. San Diego. I went in San Diego. It was really San fun. Diego is, not, is a nice city. <laughs> it, was really it is a nice city. Yeah. Um, that's why. NHL All-Star Game, I mean, it's hockey. Yeah. 
My focus is the NFL, okay? Because the Pro Bowl is a throwaway situation. Mm -hmm. We can all admit that. They get numbers because people have nothing to do. Here's how you fix the Pro Bowl, all right? Now, the NFL obviously has a way large, a bigger audience than the NBA. We know that. So, and that's not shade, like, it's just facts. It's just their all star game sucks because no one really plays and it's, you know, it's on the off week and then they play it in Orlando and it's always raining and yeah. it's just like there's all these crazy things going on. Here's how you fix it. Here's how you make the Pro Bowl actually matter, get views, and make it feel like it's an exciting thing that's going on. Talk to them. Here's what you do. I figured it all out because I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, right, I'm a genius. I should run the league. Here's what it is. First of all, the Pro Bowl needs to be moved to whatever city the Super Bowl is in. Okay, having it in Orlando that. or having it in Hawaii, while well, Hawaii is beautiful right. and I'm sure the players loved it, mm -hmm. it really is for only people that can afford to travel to Hawaii to watch a football game yes. or people that live in Hawaii, mm -hmm. which we love, mm -hmm. but I can't go there. No. So in Orlando, it's kind of the same. Like It's just a random place. There's no NFL team there. It just, it's just a place to have it where there's lots of facilities and hotels. Yeah. Have it in the city where the Super Bowl is being held. Don't have it on Sunday. Mm. Have it on Thursday. Okay. Thursday night football? Thursday night. Stop Ooh. having it during the day on Sunday where people are fatigued from the NFL season. They don't really care about this meaningless game because they're excited about the actual game that actually right. matters. It's coming up. Have it on Thursday. So leading up to it, have the skill challenge Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Have the game on Thursday at the same place that the Super Bowl is going to be. You can fix the field in time. It's really not that serious. Okay, they've turned yes. around fields in, in less time. Yeah. You got three whole days. Have the, the the Pro Bowl on Thursday. Have a celebrity flag football game on Friday. Ooh. And now what does talking. this do? This changes the entire environment of the Super Bowl mm -hmm. week. By Thursday on Super Bowl week, we are out of stories. We've talked about all of the headlines. There's Man. nothing else. So we're fatigued. Bored. We're, we're making weeks. stuff up. Okay, yeah. it's been two weeks. We have nothing to talk about. We're just dying for some football. Dying for some football. Perfect. Thursday, we've got some football. That means we have something to talk about on Friday that mm -hmm. we can mix in with the same story we've been talking about for the Super Bowl for the entire week. And it's fun. And all of the players, all of the Hall of Famers, mm -hmm. all of the media, all of the celebrities that are in town for the Super Bowl will be there on Thursday. So they can just go to the game. So you all of a sudden already have built-in star factor right there. All the players that are there for the NFL honors, the top players in the league. Everyone's going to be there and be on the sidelines watching this game. Everyone in that city is already excited for football. They're going to go to the game. Most of the fans that are going to the game are already in town for the for the Super yes. Bowl by Thursday. Yes, they are. Yes, they okay? are. Okay, because they're trying to make a weekend of mm -hmm. it. Or if they weren't, that's an extra day for the city and all of the festivities. It's genius. How has not anyone thought about this already? No, that's a that is a that is a great idea. And also, you take up the whole week so that people like LeBron and Anthony Davis can't just drop some trade rumor news and take all the momentum away from the Super Bowl. You build momentum to the Super Bowl instead of take away from right. it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Like it's 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 on Sunday. No one cares about it. Like don't just stop trying to pretend like it's a big deal. It's yeah. not. I don't even know who won this year. This is the AFC, I guess, right? Because Patrick Mahomes won MVP. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. This would make it have at least some feeling of excitement. Yeah. It would have celebrity factor, star factor, have some actual culture in the and around the game. Have somebody perform at halftime. Did you see that J, J. Cole halftime performance? I Amazing. realize that uh, NBA arenas are more intimate, but like there's so many solutions that you have to this if you make this move so just do it just give me 10 percent of the profits and it's fine um you're welcome that's it so i fixed it in the culture report this week cardi the migos culture report. yes the migos culture report cardi b and bruno mars team up again to give us a little bit more of something nobody asked for ah! and their new song please me bruno and cardi do a worse version of what they already did with the grammy winning song finesse joy you seem to like this trash song what do you think what did you call it trash first of all i oh i well i did say it's you know yeah it's bad it's not okay. Bruno Mars may be the biggest opportunist we've ever seen. Like I'm, I'm done hating on him for uh, cultural appropriation, 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 appropriation because he's he on the biggest stage possible. No, you said about cultural appropriation. Yeah, yeah. 
Appropriation. But now, after Cardi B wins for album of the year, he wants to. Now we're we're getting a, a song with Cardi. And, oh and, yeah, I'm and, sure they just popped into the studio right after she won the. I'm Grammy saying that the that. rollout was planned, and now and I'm that starting to benefit Cardi at all. It doesn't. Of course, it been, no, it doesn't benefit Cardi. It doesn't benefit Cardi. It doesn't. Be, Cardi's doing a favor for Bruno. Cardi is doing a favor for Bruno Mars. Cardi was on Bruno's tour. That was before. Okay, now is now. Like, it, no. I Talk mean, about the song. Stop. First of all, it's a good song. Okay. It's a jam. What you like about it? I like how it sounds. Oh. <laughs> What's what what noise is he trying to mimic? Like we we're trying we we're sitting listening to it. it was like who is it like Listen, old Bobby Brown like don't what, new edition the like Bruno what's... Mars hate okay because here's the thing about it all okay, right this song hate here's, the thing, about, here's the thing about Bruno Bruno Mars okay. Bruno Mars makes nothing literally nothing but bangers nothing that's fair because completely fair okay. I don't even hate him so for that. what is the problem do you not enjoy bangers I enjoy bangers. Do you like a nice banger? I'm actually not too big I love a bangers. fan of bangers. What are you not a fan of bangers? I don't really know. Like, like, honestly, I was just talking to somebody the other day about how J. Cole, old, old radio J. Cole's bad. Like, isn't this making you feel better? Like, it makes you feel, like, wealthy. 20, as good, as good as, what was the one that he did uh, with the, it was right after 24K Magic that he did? The, the second, the one, it was the one song he did that was great. That's what I like. That's what I like. That's as song. great as that's what I like was was how bad as 24K Magic was. Gorilla? I love Gorilla. What is that? Bang, bang, like Gorilla. I'm running away from Bruno Mars hits, obviously. Mean? I haven't grenade? even heard Gorilla. Gr- Catch a grenade for you? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we're going all that the way was during That was during the transitional Nothing period. Nothing but bangers. You remember the Lazy song? You remember the Lazy song? Okay, we're not going to talk about that one. Okay. Oh, so you're talking about it's, going back. It's still very catchy, though. Oh, it's a great song. It's a great song, but listening to that to... Let me move on. Right. Uh, the Oscars are this weekend, and <laughs> the 91st Annual Award... Oh, dang, I'm not throwing off all the... The Oscars feel big this year, don't they? It's... Like, uh, so, like, in general, I don't care about the Oscars, but, like... They feel important this year. Well, Black Panther nominated five times, won the biggest honors for uh, Best Picture. They're nominated for a bunch of other stuff. Best original score to my guy Ludwig, who shout out Twenty One Savage in the Grammy. So I mess with him. Uh, sound mixing, costume design, production design, sound editing. They're gonna win three or five of these. Okay, so they're up for. They'll definitely win for costume design. Yeah. Um, who are they up against in Best Picture? Best Picture nominees are Black Panther. Oh, okay, obviously. Uh, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Roma, Green Book, A Star is Born, and Vice. Yeah. Strong lineup. So everyone is saying Roma should win. I mean, in general, people, I, it's redundant, obviously. Best picture, there's usually good movies there. But Well, well yes, uh, yeah, fair. Um, but Roma, they said people are not going to vote for Roma because they don't want Netflix to really take the market on on, on production mm. and entertainment. So they might snub them and end up throwing it to Green Book, which I, you said it was good. Green Book is great. It's not better than Black Panther. As far as is just it better a, than a, Bohemian a, Rhapsody? Uh, but I don't think that Bohemian Rhapsody should even have been nominated for that. And I love Freddie Mercury, and I thought the movie was great. What about Stars Born? Stars Born is really good. I cried, but I, I also it's the fifth time they've made Stars Born. So yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Based on the fact that Black Panther is Lion King, I think it should win too. Um, oh my God, Black <laughs> Panther! I would be happy with Black Panther. Uh, Black Klansman is a sleeper, actually, because Black Klansman is a great, great movie. I think they might they might go ahead and just give Spike Lee best director for that, because like, what does he won? And I think that was really great for him to come back out of nowhere with that. Yeah, yes, yeah, good. Uh, nominees for best actor: Christian Bale, Bradley Cooper, Willem Dafoe. The guy who played uh, Freddie Mercury in, in Bohemian and Rhapsody, you and the guy, who, name. and the, the main guy in Green Book, who's not uh, Marsh, Marshall Ali, uh, um, Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, Viggo. Um, oh, also very interesting. Uh, psh, my guess for that, I didn't give it to Christian Bale. Vice is very good. I, and I just he saw Vice last week. Does not look like himself, and generally they like to reward you transforming your body into a crazy looking person. No, he'd be acting his ass off. Uh, he does. He does. Yeah. Or on in this yeah, case. Yeah, working in and out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like remember, uh, Charlize Theron and Monster. Woo! She looked crazy. That movie now. Yeah, I don't. That's it's, a, oh. it's that that movie gives me the 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 bad feels. Like how yes. Handmaid's Tale gives me the bad feels. And yeah. uh, what's what's that Netflix show? Uh, Black Mirror. Oh yes. Yeah, it just like it makes you sad. I and, saw like, the interactive. I did good. the interactive movie last night actually. The Black oh, yeah, Mirror you interactive it? movie. Hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm off. Like, I think we bailed on it after the pod person episode where she put like the body into the water with the salts and stuff. Do you remember that one? That's early. Right? We didn't really watch them in order, though. <laughs> you, you don't have you get Black Mirror. You guys are you get you guys are such conspiracy theorists and. Uh, no, yeah, after every episode, it. we were like, yeah, yeah, that happened. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, it's, I'm it's surprised either, that it's doesn't like, already that exist. happen or it's going to happen. Yeah, no, 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 it's yeah. probably going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that's this whole this whole series is the future. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, and no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us this week. Thank you to Dante Jones for yes. giving us a scoop on who the next uh, Lakers head coach is. LeBron's friend, right? LeBron's, LeBron's friend, yeah. yeah, yeah he would not appreciate yeah, yeah. saying that. But, um, <laughs> I know. It just, but we appreciate him coming on. Um, please go and subscribe on the YouTube channel, Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. Follow yes. Brandon um, at Newman Show 99 yes. myself at Joy Taylor Talks, and yes. the podcast at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Ooh.